Welcome back for more Reddit story videos. Today we have several entitled parent stories for you to enjoy. As always, don't forget to share and like if you enjoyed these videos. Without further ado, here we go. EM shows up almost 4 hours late on a school night, doesn't even pay me for the hours we agreed upon. So this is my first post on this subreddit, but it isn't my first entitled person story. Obligatory, not a mobile. English is my first language and I don't really care about grammatical errors unless they're really bad, so I most likely won't edit. Some backstory, I've been babysitting since I was about 12 years old. I've been a summertime nanny before I got a job at the restaurant I work at now. And I love being around kids. Up until this point, I hadn't had to stop watching any particular child. Usually I would cease my services when children got old enough to be left home alone. I was a junior in high school when this happened, and I knew the boys and EM really well beforehand. Or so I thought. So I had no issue watching the children. They were very sweet, polite and well behaved boys. And I never had any odd feelings towards the parents up until this point. So when a boy's mother asked me if I was free to babysit them, I was like, sure, why not? About two days before I went to babysit, I did all of my usual first time working for this family things. Are there any allergies? From when to when will I be watching the boys? Are you comfortable with the pay rate we agreed upon still? Do any of them need medication? Everything was normal. The plan was I was going to be babysitting from 4 p.m. after school until 9 p.m. that evening. Feed the boys, give them a bath, get them in PJs, make sure the little one went potty before bed at 7, he was 3 and was still getting used to not wearing pull-ups, and would get paid when the parents got home from the dinner party. $5 per kid, 2 boys per hour, for a total of $50 when they arrive, keep that in mind. The night I'm supposed to babysit comes around, it's a fairly normal experience. The boys were, as they always were, doing church, well behaved and respectful. They stay out of trouble while I made dinner, they didn't get fuzzy during bath time, went to bed after a story and a few lullabies. Everything was great. I then had 2 hours to do my homework, great. Well, 8.30 rolls around and the EM texts me that they are going to be about 30 minutes late, as the party ended at 9 instead of 8.30. I'm like, uh, that's fine and I text my dad and he says it's fine. So I go back to homework. Now, me having no concept of time unless I'm really paying attention, I didn't notice when 9.30 passes and it hits 10.30. My dad calls, concerned because I'm not home yet, I'm concerned too, because EM told me that she would be home only half an hour late, not an hour. So I tell him I'll check in. I text her and I get no reply. I try to call and I end up having to leave a voicemail. I wasn't left a number for the father, whom I hadn't met at all before this, because he often traveled for work, because his phone was broken at the time and I couldn't receive or send calls. So I was stuck there until the couple got back. I called my dad and let him know the situation, and he said that if she didn't get back to me by midnight to call the police. I thought that was a bit excessive, but nonetheless I agreed. 11pm, I text again, no response, call again, rings until voicemail and I leave another one. Still trying to be polite, but add a bit of urgency as it is school night and my dad expects me home. 11.30 hits and I text again, this time I get a response, we're on our way now, don't worry, we'll be there in 15 minutes. So I'm relieved. I text my dad and he just tells me that he will wait up for me. I start packing up my stuff because I finished my homework. I check on the boys to make sure that they are asleep, but well, one more time. And I'm prepared to go as soon as they walk in the door. 11.45. They don't show up. I'm a bit annoyed now, but I give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there was traffic. Midnight. Still aren't there. I text again, but this time I'm not polite at all. EM, I need to go home. My dad is worried and wants me home. I have school tomorrow and a physics test. When will you be here? No response. I put my stuff by the door and text my dad again. He's annoyed and tells me that if she doesn't show up by 1am, then he's coming over to watch the boys so I can go home to bed. 12.30, I get a text. We'll be home in just a few. We got hung up. 12.45, the couple gets home. I text my dad that they're home and he says that he expects me home ASAP. EM comes in with her husband and neither of them looked like they were in a rush. I was visibly annoyed and the husband looked extremely confused by this. This is also the first time he has met me and he thought I would be older. EM, thank you for watching the boys. She hands me an envelope and I look inside to see $40. Me, mmm, I don't want to be rude EM but you owe me more than this. EM, we agreed on 40 right? No, 50. 5 per kid per hour. This is when the husband chimes in. Husband, 
Honey, we're really underpaying her then. He looked like he was doing the math in his head. EM, no, we agreed upon this, so this is what you're getting. Now, I was stunned at this point. Up until now, EM had never shown any signs of entitlement. And after years of being around an alcoholic mother, I knew the difference between drunk and sober, and EM was completely sober. So I was extremely confused. Husband, honey, when did you tell her we would be home? EM, 1am? I can't hide my shock. But EM is already shooing me out the door. I am stunned as I am pushed with my stuff into the driveway and given a swift goodnight. I look at the content in the envelope and I am extremely angry by this. I text my dad that I am on my way home and I start to get into my car to leave until the husband comes out. Husband, how much do I owe you? Me, technically almost $60, but it's fine. Husband, no, no, take this. He hands me two 20s. I'm sorry about her. She told me she had a sitter for the entire night. I thought you were a college student. That was unfair. Drive home safe. I'll pay you the rest this weekend at church. True to his words, he gave me the last 20 he owed me, as well as a bit of extra for the troubles. This happened two more times before I refused to watch the boys anymore. I still see the boys at church and I love them to death, but I couldn't keep doing this as a high school student, and the boys thankfully understood. A lot of people are asking why I let it happen two more times. When babysitting, I have a three strike policy for both parents and children. For example, I no longer nanny for one family because the child would never listen to discipline and got physically violent with me if I tried to, three times. The other two times for this EM were during the day and the husband always paid me $20 extra after paying me what my rate was. They were very well behaved kids and they really liked me as a sitter. Each time I go to church, the boys always want to sit with me because they miss me. I almost threw out my free strike policy for these boys because I knew I would never have a more well behaved duo. 3 years old and 5 years old boys as well. They never threw tantrums, never have me a hard time about bedtime, bath time. So I kept them until I just felt I couldn't the third time. EM steals our inverter, UPS, and blames us for stealing her UPS. So this story happens yesterday when we bought a new UPS for our home. As our old UPS was dying out and was being used for 6.5 years. We bought a luminous battery and UPS to replace our old one. And we kept it outside of our house. Luckily our house has CCTV cams all around the place and is connected to my computer. The gate was not even locked, EM and EK came to our house and took our UPS. We had a GPS located device inside of the UPS box to ensure that no one takes it and if so, we could find it easily. When we came to our UPS for assembling, we couldn't find it. Now the story starts. Reference EM entitled mom, EK entitled kid, me Woozy Dragon 418, F my father, C cops. Part 1 finding it. The UPS is missing. Somebody stole it I guess? Check the computer for the CCTV footage right now. Me. Checks the computer for footage and I found it. Looks like a woman came with her kids and took the UPS. Father. Check the GPS location. Me. Checks the GPS location. She went to ASDFG road in front of AGDKG. In front of AGDKG. Let's go right now to find it. Part 2. Reaching her house. We reach her house and the EK is standing outside. Where is your mother? Who are you? I'll ask again, where is your mother? Who are you? I don't even know you. Just let us in. Not at all. F smashes the doorbell. EN comes out with the box just behind her, not opened. Hello, please give us our UPS back. EM, who are you? Why do you want to take our UPS? Excuse me, that's our UPS. EM, we bought it today, we won't give it to you. Go away or we will call the cops. Ah, cops again. F. Go on. My father calls the cops. EM, just F off. Me, no. EM pushed me. Hey, you. How dare you? Just effing go away. Cops came. Part 3. Cops. Just wanted to ask. Why all entitled people call the cops? I don't even know. Hello, is anything wrong here? This EM took our UPS and is not giving it back. This UPS is ours. We bought it from a store today. She's lying. Calm down, can I check the bill? Sir, these are criminals. They came to steal our UPS. Please arrest them. Wait. Sir, please arrest them. Shut the F up. Show me the bill for the UPS right now. Here it is. The bill had my name on it. EM is silent. 
Whose name is Woozy Dragon 4018? It's my name. My father bought it for me. Those are the fake bills, sir. Do you have any other proof that this UPS is yours? Sir, ask my EK. It's ours. We have the CCTV footage, sir. Show it to me. My father shows the footage and cop EM, you're under arrest. But, 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 shut up and come. Sir, please forgive us. We won't do this mistake again. Okay, but for the last time, don't steal other things, okay? Cops go away, we take our UPS and head back home. The race card. You know how they say that the culprit always returns to the scene after the crime? Well, it was me, in every room, with my bare hands. But enough about what I do during my executive time. You didn't come here to read me rambling about inconsequential nonsense. You came for a cohesive short form narrative because you're smart. This story takes place back in the olden days of yore. During my time of glorified carny, it was the first proper job I ever had at the tender age of 14. Those of you familiar with my tale of the purple fish will remember me having spoken of this job before. For the benefit of those who didn't read that one and for the purposes of padding out this story, my first job was as a game attendant at a nearby amusement park. Basically, you give me money, I let you play the game, if you win, you could take home an unlicensed oversized Stewie doll or perhaps a Nickelback mirror if you're one of those people. As an attendant, the management would keep you on a constant rotation around the park, so I worked pretty much every game there in the two summers I was employed there. Now, I've already bitched about this before, so I won't go into excruciating detail, but people be dumb and had a tendency to not fully understand some of these games, despite the signage telling you the cost and the rules of each. I dealt with this on a daily basis, and it is what taught me that hell is other people. Today's story began on a day much like any other. It was a humid, sticky day, the kind where you can literally feel waves of stink wafting off of your own skin. It felt as though I had dipped my nuts in expired vinegar. Ladies, on this particular day I had been assigned to the water gun race. You know the one, it's a classic carnival contest. You pay your entry fee, $2.00 get on a water turret and compete with other players to win by shooting at a target in an attempt to move these goofy plastic horses across the track. To the victor go to the spoils but to those who don't win. Well to quote the philosopher Wonka, you get nothing, you lose, good day sir. Seems simple enough right? I thought so too. But as I said before, people be dumb, which brings me to the family this story is about. I was standing there waiting for some guests to come along and play the game when this waspy nuclear family comes up to the game. The father looks like he aspires to model for tennis product ads wearing a cream colored polo, even though it's clearly his day off. His color popped like some kind of country club vampire. The mother wearing those giant designer sunglasses that are so popular with the Karens of the world. Takes a deep drag from her Virginia Slim, despite the park's no smoking policy. She flicks the ash which catches in the wind and blows right back into the drooling face of the sleeping toddler in the stroller. He doesn't react at all. Lastly, there is a little girl, maybe 6 or 7 year old and looking like she's going to church. She sees the prizes at the game I'm working, which are stuffed ponies and her eyes lit up. I want to play this one, I want a pony. The parents, though giving me an unpleasant vibe usually reserved for when I see commercials for the Gap, ask me fairly politely to clarify the rules, which I explained firstly. You pay 2 bucks per player, there has to be a minimum of 2 players. Winners get the prize, losers don't, capiche? The parents agree to these terms and slap down a pair of Washingtons on the counter. I look over and see there's no other players. I'm sorry, I can't start the game with any less than 2 players, I reiterated. That's okay, we'll wait for someone else to come play, replied the dad. I shrugged, suit yourself. A few minutes later, several other kids with some youth group came up to play the game as well. I took their money, dispensed change and explained the rules yet again. But now we had enough plays for a race, so I started the game up. This little girl as it turns out was no Annie Oakley. As a matter of fact, she probably hit me more than she hit the target and I was in what was supposed to be the safe zone. The parents didn't even try to help her, consequently she did not win the race and the pony went to another child. The little girl put it and whined, to which her mother called, it's okay honey, you can try again. Dad put down another $2 as did several of the other players, so I reset the game and take 2 began. Sure enough, the little girl loses again by a significant margin. This happens multiple times, each round ending with some other kid winning the coveted Made in Thailand pony and reasonably ascertained was stuffed with asbestos. Eventually, the youth group, having all won their prizes, took off. 
I look at family who were all now glaring at me. Mom was pissed. What gifts? How come my daughter didn't win a prize? Ori, I told you, I explain again, you have to win a race to win a prize. Those kids all beat her. Dad, also not infused with the situation, piped up. Are you kidding me? We just spent $20 here. She's just a little kid. How the hell is she supposed to compete with other kids, especially older ones? Leave your body, TG. Look, I sigh. I don't know what to tell you. It's a racing game. You have to win to get the prize. That's how it works. You could help her aim during the race and maybe you'll win. Otherwise, one of you could play with her in a one-on-one -on -one race. Then you are guaranteed a prize. The man scoffed. You want us to pay for two plays to win one prize? That's a ripoff. It's the rules. There has to be at least two players, I reminded them. I'm just saying, you could have done that from the beginning and saved a few bucks. No, Dad interrupted. We are not going to pay for two players to win one prize. The girl began whining again. Daddy, I want one. The dad shoots me a dirty look and throws another pair of ones on the counter. I look at the money, then back up to him. So you just want to pay for one player again? Mm-hmm. Dad grumbled, irritated and disinterested in what I had to say anymore. Lo and behold, another family came to play and the daughter lost for the 11th time in a row. This was the final straw for these folks. Alright, that's it. This game is rigged, the dad snapped, grabbing his daughter's arm and leading her away. The mom shook her head disapprovingly, as though I had somehow grifted them out of 22 bucks on purpose, before also turning around to walk away. You bitch, the little girl called back out to me as her parents led away. What? A few minutes later, my supervisor came to me and asked me what I had said to them. What do you mean, I asked, still thrown off by the whole thing. Well, they said that you were rigging the game against them because they were white. I stared back at my supervisor for what I felt like three or four minutes. What? Yeah, I, uh, I don't think so. My supervisor said, Satisfied with my confusion over the accusation. Carry on, TG. Oh, okay, I will, I replied, still reeling from the events which had just transpired. Just then, another extremely Vermont tourism body family came walking up to the game. Their child screeding with the rapturous glee over the stuffed horses. Oh, I want to play this one. I want a pony. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be highly appreciated. It really does help my channel out. Also, if you enjoy this and want to stay up to date on the latest videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video.